Honorable Speaker, I guess uh, in terms of uh, trade missions, there is always a question of what are you bringing back to your home country. I can, I'm pleased to report that uh, in terms of potential investment generated from the, the meetings, there was about uh, 100 million, 108 million leads uh, generated through trade and investment potential. Um, and that's excluding the 200 million that is currently on, uh, going to be invested by Google in a data center. Uh, and also, I'm happy to report that there will be delegations from Canada coming into Fiji very soon, very soon. Honorable Speaker, from what we saw during the, um, the visit, there is substantial potential in the North American region for trade and investment, including, Honorable Speaker, diaspora investment. This mission has acted as a platform to connect with the diaspora, meet current and potential investors, develop networks, and strengthen our relationships within government agencies and partners of Fiji. I, will I wish to assure this August House that we will continue to explore and strengthen our networks in the North American region. The Canadian opportunity, sir, is quite exciting, particularly when um, it has the same demographics and dynamics as the Australian uh, economy. And it's almost like as if we were entering uh, another major opportunity, Honorable Speaker, when we visited uh, Canada. And we look forward to further engagements with Canada uh, and the Canadian businesses over the next few months. The diaspora that actually lives in that particular portion of the world. And pre-1987, Honorable Speaker, the Fiji had a visa-free, uh, it was visa-free to Canada. And I'm hoping also that the Honourable Minister have managed to have some discussions with respect to that issue because we have a huge diaspora and I think pretty much uh, quite a few people who live in Fiji have relatives there. So it would be an important issue that would go hand in hand with our trade um, uh, with them. In terms of the rest of North America, Honourable Speaker, the, the trade that actually happens, I think the number, the larger number out of the figures uh, comes from the Fiji, from Fiji water export. We need to increase our trade, and I think that's the only region where the balance of trade is in our favor. Uh, mostly, most of the places around the world, it's not in our favor, but this is the one place, and, and, it, and it comes out of the export of Fiji water. We are exporting less to that particular, particular region, and these kinds of missions are important for us to grow our export sector. But at the same time, Honorable Speaker, the encouragement also needs to come for our local growers to try and pursue those avenues. And this is why I pointed out uh, the issue regarding biosecurity. Uh, Honorable Speaker, um, the Canada also has a growing e-commerce industry. Uh, it, it, it exports many other things also, but it has a growing e-commerce uh, e industry. And I hope the Honorable Minister managed to tap into some people there to see if there was room for Im improvement and, and investment into Fiji. The travel and tourism industry also is something that's important to uh, North America. And these were discussions that were ongoing for many, many years, but nothing has actually come to fruition. I, I will uh, wait, Honorable Speaker, to see how many of these projects that, uh, that have come on board will come into fruition. And I hope, I'm hopeful that uh, Investment Fiji will facilitate them as quickly as possible, because I know that one of the things that comes out of these North Americans is that they want things done quickly, Approvals and processes, etc., need to take place really quickly so that they can get their projects into space, into, into the space, and actually start exporting and importing whatever it is that they need to do. One area that I'm not sure if the honourable uh, uh, minister managed to tap into, they have a huge cannabis industry also, and I think the medicinal cannabis industry that the honourable uh, minister has spoken about earlier, they are they are certainly experts in that particular area, and I hope the minister managed to speak to some people to see if we can get some assistance whether we should be doing that or not, Honourable Speaker. With those few words, I thank the Honourable Minister for a, a well-led mission. I think the right amount of people and the right people actually went across. And uh, most definitely, sir, from our perspective too, we've heard some positive re reports regarding the mission that actually went across. I thank you, Honourable Speaker. There is a commodity that Fiji has that is uh, our mahogany. Uh, we have a, 
Our mahogany is the second largest plantation mahogany in the world, second to Brazil. Very unique uh, feature of our mahogany, they say, is that because it has those pin knots, uh, you, you see Fiji mahogany has got those little black dots. I, I think that that is a commodity as we go into our, our trade missions that we need to uh, uh, advertise or promote more. Uh, because right now our mahogany usually goes down to, South, uh, to America via South America, uh, and, it, and it is really timber. Uh, I had asked uh, Mr. Speaker at one time, uh, I, I sounded out a very rich business, a billionaire in fact, and I, and I asked him about mahogany in Fiji, he said, what would you do with the mahogany if it belonged to you? And he basically said, he said, uh, mahogany is a rich man's furniture. And, you know, I would process it halfway here in Fiji so that we can get employment, a bit of downstreaming, and then send it across to one of those companies that do those signature furnitures, put their signature on it and sell it. Uh, uh, so I, I, I urge um, uh, the Honorable uh, Deputy Prime Minister in further trade missions that we should be trying to uh, promote our mahogany products, not only the timber, but uh, ways in which we can tap into those niche markets. Uh, because ours is a, is a plantation mahogany. Uh, in, in countries in South America where mahogany grows freely, um, there's a lot of restrictions put on it because uh, of deforestation, uh, deforestation sorry, in, in the areas where they grow. Uh, on the other point, Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, on our diaspora, <coughs> Uh, there is this big problem that we're facing now, which is brain drain, and, and the way to, uh, to perhaps uh, arrest brain drain is to turn it into a brain drain game. Uh, as they go out, uh, they go and invest, they, they, they learn how to uh, run their businesses, they are well educated, but we would like to turn that brain drain into a brain drain game. And that gain comes when our policies uh, for them here locally is correct. Policies with immigration and how they can come back. Uh, policies uh, with how you, they can come in and set up their businesses. Uh, and, and I know uh, that uh, we have uh, 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 seen this big flow of uh, people out of Fiji um, we, uh, as, as brain drain, but we can turn that around. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, into a brain brain gain by looking at the policies that we have to ensure that it can attract them to come back and share uh, with us the expertise that they have and help uh, build our country.